members of the Kiwanis Club of Manila, the Kiwanis Philippine Luzon District, allows me to also to make special mention of Manila Eagles of Philippines Luzon District 3A, of which I have been designated a uh, charter member. To our other esteemed guests and friends, ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you all. Thank you for having me here in your handover rights and installation of officers. It is my honor to take part in this assembly of the Kiwanis Club of the Philippines, which has continuously proven itself as a formidable voice an effective arm of Philippine civil society. No less composed of brilliant, influential, and successful Filipinos who excel in their individual fields and chosen crafts. Allow me to take advantage of tonight's gathering of our friends from Kiwanis to stress on certain pressing and dire issues of our country today in an attempt to call on and to marshal support from the Kiwanis Club of the Philippines. All of us have heard about the strong and unprecedented economic gains posted by the country, which Malacanang has always been very quick to bask in its glory, to pipe to the credit of the present administration. Experts suggest that this economic surge of the country can be explained by its burgeoning young population, theorizing that higher, product, higher population means the increased productivity and also higher demand for goods and services, among other significant factors. <coughs> for everybody's information, today's Philippine populace has an average age of 23 years old, way below the global average of 30 years old. This is uh, very good news indeed, I think, for all of us, because on the basis of that statistic, we can lay claim to all being 23 years old. So when we are asked, uh, ilang taon na po kayo? I am only 23 years old and I have data to prove it. But in any case, pero pagdating ng na, nasa restaurant, ang bibilis pumunod ng senior citizens mark. Sayang din yun eh, di ba? <laughs> In fact, I distinctly remember that in July of last year, when our country's population hit the 100 million mark, our very own Commission on Population viewed this milestone with the same, with a kind of ambivalence, stating that this is both an opportunity and a challenge, an opportunity that we should take advantage of, and a challenge that we must recognize. Our soaring and promising economic growth has also been attributed to the consistent performance of our tourism industry, which has even led the international community to observe that the Philippines is a rising star in travel and in tourism. However, in spite of all these world-renowned and positively viewed attributes of our country, these same qualities may have proven to be also the bane of our own existence as a nation. Let us consider some of the harrowing figures which reflect the dark side of our attributes as a young nation with a young population and as a popular tourist destination. The PNP Women and Children Protection Center has reported a staggering spike in rape cases in our country from a 15-year average of almost 4,000 cases to upwards of 7,000 cases in the past year. And even more disturbing is that 77% of these cases involve victims who are minors. To facilitate a better understanding by the people of the impact of these figures, the PNP translated the information this way. There is an incident of rape that happens every 72 minutes somewhere in the country. There are 20, 20 incidents of rape that occur throughout the country every single day. And 15 of these incidents, again, involve minors. At the same time, the trafficking of persons is a scourge of our country's tourism potential. Hindi ko pinag-uusapan yung terribling traffic na kasalukoyang dinadanas ng, ng lahat ng nating Metro Manila. Araw-araw, gabi-gabi, iba yun. But I know many people are really trafficking our streets now with their two and a half million cars, especially along SF. 
It is alarming, but that is only alarming to our drive home tonight. We have many more, much weightier problems to, to contend with. I am referring to the evil of human traffic. Sex tourism is the evil alter ego of our country's tourism industry. Hundreds of thousands of Filipino children lay prone and lay prey to sick and perverse sexual predators, both local and foreign, who come to the Philippines in the guise of tourism, but in reality for the purpose of satisfying their dark and sinister desires and victimizing our young people. This is not, this is, and this is to say nothing further about the thousands more cases that do not involve minors, but involve adults as well. The list goes on. In fact, as we speak, our children are being recruited as members of armed rebel groups all over the country. Upon recruitment, these children will start and spend the next chapters of their lives get, uh, getting brainwashed and immersed in a culture of hate against government and the heartless and senseless violence and aggression towards even their own fellow Filipinos. All these facts and figures show that as a result or in exchange for the pursuit of economic growth, the foundations of our progress provide the very seedbed that make possible and perpetuate the conditions allowing for the utter and reckless disregard of the rights of Filipino children. According to the grandson of one of Jose Rizal's former students in Tapitan City, this is the result of our multiple failures, a failure of our morals, a failure within the family, and a failure of society. I would venture to add another point of failure. That would be the failure of government. On the part of Congress, I can say with pride that we have tried to do our part and continue to do our part the country is not lacking in the needed legislation to curb these problems of our society. Congress has legislated and, the, and, many, and uh, uh, deliberated many important laws that precisely intend to empower government to address these evils and also provide the resources to finance the relevant offices and agencies for their programs year in and year out. I guess that it all boils down to inadequate enforcement. So if the present administration can boast with confidence and proudly lay claim to the country's supposed economic gains, then it should equally have the courage to say mea culpa and accept responsibility for the continued proliferation of these dastardly and despicable acts and practices that are that lay prey to our Filipino children. It is in the face and on the way of these perceived failures that call on and enlist the help of our society, of our civil society. In the spirit of compassionate and selfless voluntarism, for you, for them to come in, to contribute their share, and to compensate for government's noted inadequacy in these important departments. As an established, organized, and credible civil society that professes to serve the children of the world and to improve society one child at a time, one community at a time, the Kiwanis Club is the perfect partner of the Philippine government and the Filipino family in addressing these ills of society that plague our country. through your usual and familiar direct, on the ground, and high impact programs and projects. Either you can act as the watchdogs yourselves, or at the very least empower and support the watchdogs, such as our police force, especially the Women and Children Protection Center of the PNP. Our police force will certainly appreciate the much needed boost, not only in their morale, but also in their resources, considering that the efficiency of the PNP has always been hampered by institutional weakness, such as those owing to manpower and budgetary constraints. <clears throat> in partnership with the private sector, our police force can be better equipped in finding ways to strengthen the rep reporting and complaint mechanism, while at the same time ensuring and upholding the sanctity of the confidentiality and secrecy of the identity of this information. Note that our police has precisely identified the weak link to, the, to be 
the victim's natural hesitation to come forward to tell these terrible, harrowing, and sordid tales. Inasmuch as their privacy, their dignity, their honor, their self-respect are on the line. The private sector can provide that mantle of protection for victims and complainants, not only with the trademark perfectionism and quality that has characterized the private sector participation here in our country, but also with the needed sensitivity, care, and compassion that sometimes, often, government lacks and the concerns that government sometimes, often, overlooks. For as long as our country is plagued by these ills that rob our children of their innocence and the exuberance of their youth and childhood, these will always be a continuing challenge not only to the government, but also to private charitable organizations such as the Kiwanis Club. So I issue this ardent call to your club, of to the Kiwanis Club of the Philippines, most especially now to the Kiwanis Club of Manila and the Kiwanis Philippines Luzon District and my own very own Manila Eagles. I urgently rally everyone, especially the incoming district governor and club officers to make the Kiwanis Clubs of the Philippines ever more effective and worthy partners of government in its effort in protecting children's rights and in the collective task of nation building. I cannot see and I cannot know in the long time that I have been in public service, a greater need than we see today. I cannot see and I cannot imagine a greater cause than we, that we should, that we should embark upon than to protect our children. For when we do this, we protect our children, we protect our future, we protect our country. Once again, I thank you all for giving me this opportunity to be with you tonight. Certainly, you can, uh, you can be assured that I am your ally in government, and you can count on my support to further your mission here in, in our country, and hope that I too can count on your support in the future. Congratulations to you all, especially to the new district governor and the club officers, who we shall induct into their respective officers in a short while. Let us march forward to more years of meaningful, productive, and compassionate service to the community and to the country. Mabuhay ang Kiwanis International, Mabuhay ang Kiwanis Club of Maydina, at ang Kiwanis Philippines on District. Maraming maraming salamat po at magandang